Hey, what is going on everybody? So in today's video, we are finally going to be getting around to my updated character guide for Dark Dimension 3. And what does this mean exactly? Well, I am going to be going over all of the characters that I think are best suited to take into each of the lanes, be it global, cosmic, or city. And I'm going to be going to end with my personal recommendations for the first five, since this is often a question asked. Now, in this video, most of these characters are ones who you'll very likely want to take with you into Dark Dimension 4 as well. But there are a few standouts who are not only are better in 3 than 4, but also better in 4 than 3. So ones you might not want to raise immediately for this version of Dark Dimension, uh, but perhaps a bit later. There are a few of these that pop up because of the separation of the Legendary Elaine, which occurs in Dark Dimension 4. Uh, later on, I'll be doing a separate video about my thoughts on DD4 characters based on my own completion experiences coming soon though. Uh, Timestamps will be listed in the description below in case you're only interested in a particular lane or are part way through and just looking for some extra tips. So without further ado, let's get this show started. Alright, so let's get started here with the global lane of Dark Dimension 3. Now, these characters with the hearts that you can see, with the exception of Jubilee because my head's in the way, uh, these are all of the characters that you could even possibly consider for Dark Dimension 3 and Dark Dimension 4 as well. There's actually a few other characters uh, who I want to kind of note. Don't ignore Polaris here because <laughs> that's because uh, for other reasons not related to this video. And obviously Doctor Doom. Surprise! I do have Doctor Doom. Uh, so there are a few characters that I did take to tier 14 and above, but this was because uh, this was a long time ago when I did Dark Dimension 3. So uh, those are characters like Colossus. So Colossus as a tank is good with Phoenix, but loses a lot of value going into Dark Dimension 4 because Phoenix is separated from the global lane, in this case with the legendary lane. Uh, so while Colossus might be good with Phoenix in Dark Dimension 3, he doesn't have that value in Dark Dimension 4. So I can't really recommend him for Dark Dimension 3 because a lot of the characters that I do want to recommend here in this video are characters that you are eventually going to take onwards to Dark Dimension 4. Shuri is another one that I'd like to mention. A lot of people do take her up for Dark Dimension 3, including myself, I did that. Uh, but that was with, you know, less characters available than there are now. Also, she isn't really one of the top legendary lane characters for Dark Dimension 4. So for that reason, I need to cut Shuri from this uh, recommendation list. Scientist Supreme, another one that I used in my early days of Dark Dimension 3, but again, don't do that. Same with Strife, you actually don't need a tank. And why do you not need a tank? Well, that's because one of the best characters in Dark Dimension in general is Ghost. Now, she's been recently made farmable in the War Store. That's where you can pick her up. Uh, but the reason why she's so good is she's basically yo-yo in Dark Dimension with a lot more. So, you know, let's start off with the passive here. There's a lot of text here related to Pym Tech and all that stuff, but what's important is the Dark Dimension text. So, not only does she heal herself and other Pym Tech allies, again, that's not really important, uh, but it's this part here... <laughs> If you scroll down here, so on any enemy's turn, I'll apply offense down to that enemy. So again, it's basically like Yo-Yo's passive, but it works only in Dark Dimension uh, and applies offense down to that character. And that's really, really important because of that, you don't really need to have a tank because you're constantly applying offense down to any of the enemies in uh, Dark Dimension. Now, the only exception for this is that if any character is doing assist, uh, or obviously a counterattack, something like that, uh, then you're not going to be getting an offense down because it has to be on that character's turn. So anyone like, uh, let's say, Miss Marvel, uh, who assists with hero brawlers, you know, none of these assisting characters are going to get that offense down. So there are a few situations where this can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, other than that, though, with ISOs now, uh, this her basic is really, really good. Reducing speed bar by 25% on a basic attack. This is why you must have her as a striker. That way when she follows up for an additional attack, she's reducing an additional 25% speed bar. So anywhere from 25 to 50% on an attack on a character, that's huge speed bar reduction, which is really, really great. And really, the other reason why you want to have her is she's basic, she can kind of replace Phoenix in Dark Dimension 3 in a lot of ways. If you don't have Phoenix unlocked yet or you missed her unlocked for whatever reason, uh, she does have a health steal component. You do need T4s into this at level 7. Once again, my head's in the way 
away. Uh, but if I scroll down enough here, you get an additional 5% health from all enemies, stealing for a total of 15% health steal from all enemies. Now, this is on a cooldown of 5, and she's really, really fast. So this comes back around uh, quite frequently. But from the heal side of things, not as good as Minerva. It only heals Pimtech allies, which realistically is usually just herself. Uh, does a little bit of damage, but it does also prolong all negative effects by one so very 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 strong ultimate bypasses heal block and it's unavoidable can't be blocked really really good so on top of the sort of the uh yo-yo passive there that you got going on you got the health steal uh and you got the turn bar knockdown knockback <laughs> she is by far the best character in dark dimension 3 global global in general Dark Dimension 4 Global, and hell, if you haven't beaten Dark Dimension 2 yet, and for some reason you're still watching this video, uh, then definitely recommended for Dark Dimension 2 as well. So, again, a great replacement for Phoenix if you don't have her, but Phoenix is still uh, one of the top choices, I think, for Dark Dimension 3 Global, because every time she dies with Dark Phoenix, you know, she's uh, getting, uh, you know, it's really easy to get her skills, is mainly for Dark Phoenix, because of that Vitality Drain, which is going to drain 20% health from all enemies and so it's kind of like ghosts in that regard uh except for that if you're doing additional runs and stuff like that her cooldowns always reset on phoenix and dark phoenix so it's very easy to get back around so uh this is another character that i would highly recommend for dark dimension 3 now, some of the other characters also, in, unfortunately, mutant. There's a lot of mutant global characters. Uh, with, they're basically all global. Uh, but Emma Frost and Mr. Sinister, two very, very strong characters in Dark Dimension 4 global. Also very strong in Dark Dimension 3. Now, I always get asked this question, who is better to take, Emma or Mr. Sinister first? And honestly, I have a hard time... Uh, figuring that one out myself. I think that would probably come down to sort of your yellow and red stars for those characters. They're both really, really good. I might edge it towards Emma Frost if you do have a higher potential power for her uh, because her kit is really good. She slows down uh, all enemies by 10% speed, which is really, really strong. And then, of course, she can apply uh, speed slow down, slow to all enemies on a cooldown of three. And her survivability is really, really good. So on top of that, though, some other characters that you might want to consider. Uh, Baron Zemo is one of these characters who are really good for Dark Dimension 4 but not as good in Dark Dimension 3 because the enemies hit really, really hard in Dark Dimension 3. I think they hit harder than uh, characters in Dark Dimension 4 Global. So Zemo really doesn't, he's very glass cannony, but he just doesn't survive very well in 3 compared to 4 where he survives a little bit better. Other characters, if you have really good red stars, the Hawkeye and Black Widow combo together can be really, really strong, uh, but you would have to use both of them together. So at the bare minimum, you should be running at least Ghost Emma Frost and Sinister and Phoenix if you do have her. If not, then you can kind of pivot a little bit here. Uh, Red Guardian is a very solid tank, in, unfortunately expensive on the skill gear, but skill is a little bit more flexible because there's not a ton of crazy good characters for skill, so that's something worth mentioning there. Jubilee, uh, she is on my star list here, but she isn't usually someone that you'd want to take into Dark Dimension 3, but she is a very solid character for Dark Dimension 4, so someone that you'll eventually want to bring up. Ultron, I really want to bring this up here because it's a bit of a wild card one. I did take him into my original run of Dark Dimension 3, uh, but he did not have red stars. Now, as of patch 5.3, coming very, very soon around the corner, uh, we'll have the opportunity to get red stars for Ultron. So I did want to give an honorable mention out to him. Uh, I don't know how difficult those are going to be to get, but if they're not too hard, this might be something that's worth considering. Uh, unfortunately, it does take tech gear, of course. So that's kind of taking away from Ghost. You do want to prioritize Ghost first, but if you do have extra tech gear for whatever reason, then I think Ultron is worth considering. These are realistically the top characters that you're going to want to include. If you're really desperate, I mean, I really wouldn't do this, but Sabretooth, you could do that. Uh, and then some of these characters I mentioned before, but there isn't many down here on the global list frankly that i can recommend with a good solid heart uh so i would really keep to these ones that i have on the heart list above here so that's it for global let's move on to cosmic and in cosmic we have a little bit of a slimmer list in my opinion in terms of viable characters for dark dimension 3. Uh, some of the obvious standouts are ebony maw especially because he's a really strong legendary who has uh, a ton of support value here 
not only does he give defense up for two turns to all your allies, he does give offense down for two turns to all enemies. Uh, his Force Transfusion Ultimate steals health to a total of 15% uh, and applies slow for two turns, which is really, really great. Uh, and if you're using him alongside Thanos, he does give a lot of uh, synergy there with giving Thanos speed bar, sharing some buffs with the, the stones that they transfer to each other. So Thanos and Ebony Maw are a very common duo to take into Dark Dimension 3. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, though, you know, some people will tell you that Thanos is kind of on the down now with Black Order, but I still think that they're a very solid duo and worth considering, depending on what kind of star levels you have and if you have Ebony Maw unlocked. If you don't have Ebony Maw unlocked, you know, I would consider character, if you have Silver Server, very solid character. A lot of these are Mystic. <laughs> <laughs> as you can see uh hella here also a mystic character very strong and obviously minerva a very important character uh, i probably don't need to explain to you the merits of minerva with her lifesteal of her ultimate really important reason and she can revive uh, but if you're going to be running minerva i definitely recommend hella those two together are very 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 strong and once again i'm not going to be explaining the kits for all of the characters here uh, but hella's greg here uh, whenever they die which is very very often in dark dimension that gives minerva turn bar so every time a greg dies minerva's picking up 20 to 25 percent turn bar part of me actually really wanted to pick up this t4 even though it doesn't seem very good if you're using her a lot in dark dimension this really adds up with the combination of hella other than that it's not a crazy good t4 but in this certain instance it made me want to consider it so Minerva is really good here. If you're using Minerva and Hela, uh, Shatterstar and Longshot, another honorable mention I want to bring out here because it's two mutant characters. It's difficult if you're running a lot of mutants in the global lane. If you're not running, you know, more than, say, Phoenix and uh, Emma Frost, you know, you could consider Shatterstar and Longshot. They are not farmable yet, but they are a very strong duo, and I wanted to give them an honorable shout-out here. So soon, who knows, maybe around the corner, Shatterstar might become farmable. He's probably going to become farmable before Longshot uh, because he was an event character. But I do want to mention these two because they are very strong. If you are someone who spends a little bit of money and you do happen to have Shatterstar and Longshot at a decent level, I would totally consider that. Silver Surfer, also another shout out here, uh, but obviously because of star levels and his lack of farmability, except for the raid season milestones or money, uh, the yellow stars are a little bit of an issue. If you can get to about three star, three yellow, three red, I think that's that's viable but personally I am a big fan of Minerva and Hela at the bare minimum uh, Thanos and Ebony Ma also a strong consideration on top to make four characters if you need to fill this out uh, you can uh, get Proxima Midnight still a very strong character and uh, she's a skill character making her a little bit easier to gear uh, she can offense down for two turns this is very good when combined with Hela because it can spread two turns of offense down across the board and very good and uh, she can stun and slow as well so you might might be able to get a slow spread in there if you time it properly with Hela. So uh, my thoughts here, Hela and Minerva I think are a definite must. And then if you don't have Ebony Maw, you don't have to take Thanos. You could go Silver Surfer or Shatterstar and Longshot. Other mentions here, Black Bolt. Uh, not as solid as he was before, still a good character, but in Dark Dimension 4 he gets separated into the legendary lane and not someone that I'd really consider there for that. Invisible Woman. Another mention here, because she is good in Dark Dimension 4 Legendary, uh, I did take her into Dark Dimension 3 Cosmic, and she is viable here, but she is also bio ahead of the city lane, which we're going to talk about, and uh, why that's really, really important. There isn't a lot of other characters, though, I, you know, not to really go in your first run, or, you know, possibly even your second. Loki, Cor Corvus Glaive, only if you're going to be running the rest of the... Yeah, I wouldn't even recommend this, actually, I'm not sure why I brought that up. Uh, I would really keep it to just Thanos, Proxima, you know, maybe Cull of City, and if you really wanted to bring up your Black Order a little bit more, still for Dark Dimension 3. Uh, I can't really, with a good conscience, recommend many of these other characters for Cosmic. Bishop, maybe, if you're going really, really hard on uh, Astonishing X-Men, I, I can't really recommend any of the others, so... Frankly, I, I think this is your best bet, is this top shelf here, uh, these characters, Minerva, Shatterstar, Longshot, so something of these eight, you could bring in, squeeze an Invisible Woman if you really need to, but uh, we're going to be talking about City, and in terms of why you need to kind of hold off your bio gear, because it's going to be clumped up there, so let's check things out. 
And now we come to the city lane for Dark Dimension 3, which to me is actually quite the easiest choices to make. Uh, the ones that I have hearted here, uh, the nine here, are realistically the only choices that you can make for city. Now, maybe this is one more than Cosmic, I forget how many I had hearted there, but realistically it comes down to Symbius Spider-Man. You can't have a Dark Dimension City team without Symbius Spider-Man. Uh, he is the star of the show, and unfortunately if you don't have him unlocked, uh, you know, hopefully you do at this point because of the milestone orbs. Hopefully you've collected enough of them to be able to unlock him. Uh, but he has a ton of raid and dark dimension tech specifically related to his symbiote allies. And it's this 100% drain for himself and all symbiote allies, which is just absolutely bonkers. Not to mention he gets 30% max health to all of the symbiote characters. But in terms of the order that you want to upgrade your symbiotes, personally, I would recommend symbiote Spider-Man to start. And then I would like to say Anti-Venom and Scream 2nd and 3rd because this is the way that you're going to want to upgrade them for Dark Dimension 4. Uh, alternatively though, because they're not really farmable, Scream is fountainable, you know, through arena orbs. You can't really farm her very well, but she was a campaign event character. But if you're coming up now, you know, trying to get to Dark Dimension 3, uh, hopefully Scream becomes more actually farmable soon and she isn't in the arena orbs for too long before she gets shifted into the supplies. But uh, Anti-Venom also isn't farmable at this point. I hope that he will become soon. Uh, but if your star levels are very low or for whatever reason you haven't unlocked Anti-Venom, then obviously you can go from Symbiote Spider-Man to Carnage and then to Venom. Other considerations for the city lane, Doc Ock, if you happen to have him unlocked, very, very solid character and someone you're gonna need to take forward into Dark Dimension 4 for the legendary lane as well. So very good character there. Uh, Night Nurse is getting a lot more of a nod these days, especially with her inclusion with the Shadowland team. Her rework is very good, but you do need to invest in some T4s for her in order to make her valid, particularly the passive here, uh, which gives her some survivability because she is not a symbiote, so therefore she's not healing up with Drain. Uh, so this allows us to keep her alive a little bit longer. And her first aid, T4, which is basically what gives her all the healing, I know my head's in the way here, but basically it clears the three negative effects from the most injured ally and all adjacent allies and heals them as well. So heals up to three characters really, depending on uh, where they're placed, uh, and it heals for quite a lot, and it's on a cooldown of three. So not only does it clear its negative status effects, but it does heal a big chunk, and she can apply slow for two turns on her basics. So she's a very, very solid choice here outside of the symbiotes. She is a skill character as well, so she's fairly easy to gear. Now, unfortunately, all of the symbiotes are bio, so you need to save as much bio gear as you possibly can for uh, the symbiotes because that's where a good chunk of your bio gear is going to go towards. Now, outside of that, I do want to make an honorable mention for Punisher. He is actually better in Dark Dimension 3 than he is in Dark Dimension 4 where he's a bit of a wet noodle. I'll be honest, he was part of my team for Dark Dimension 4 City, uh, but realistically he was the first to die and, you know, his, his biggest claim to fame was him dying and giving Screams passive an activation to give everyone else speed up. So... Um, not the best there. I do want to give a shout out for Multiple Man as well. He is a bit of a newer character, but he is the only mutant city character. So if you are looking to use your mutant gear elsewhere, you know, if you still haven't used them in Cosmic or Global and you still have some left over, uh, Multiple Man could be considered here. He was recently through uh, in the character event, the event campaigns rather, sorry, uh, from this last patch. Uh, and he is someone that's really strong for the X-Factor team. So if you have some lying around and you want to take him to tier 14, I think he would work really well because he does help tank with his clones, which trigger very, very frequently and helps because the AIs do like to target these sort of weak characters like Greg or like multiple man clones, for example. So another character you might want to consider if you don't have a crap ton of bio gear to invest in all of these symbiotes. Once again, I would say Symbiote Spider-Man, to Anti-Venom to scream if you can, if not, it's, it's perfectly okay to go Symbiote Spider-Man, Carnage, and Venom. That's what I did originally back in the day, but I do think that the newer Symbiotes, Anti-Venom and Scream, have a little bit more to offer than Carnage and Venom, but you can't go wrong with any of them, but realistically, Symbiote Spider-Man has to come first. If you have Doc Ock available to you, that's great, do him. Uh, Night Nurse 
multiple man, those are also good choices. Other than that, I, I, I really, I, once again, I can't really recommend a lot of these other characters. Uh, some have taken Ghost Rider in the past, but again, Mystic, plenty of better Mystic choices in Cosmic that you'll want to save your gear for. Um, unless there's some serious rework for the Heroes for Hire coming this patch with Iron Fist, Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones, I can't really recommend them either. So really, that's about it, I think. I would, you know, you always want to make sure that you're gearing up the best characters that you can that you won't regret using. And for me, Punisher was a little bit of a regret for Dark Dimension 4, but that's something we'll talk about when we get to Dark Dimension 4's best characters. Uh, but you want to feel good about your choices. So definitely start with some Spider-Man the symbiotes you can't go wrong with them so it's pretty easy here but just make sure that you do someone that you know you won't regret and now we come to the part of the video where i kind of recommend what your first five characters for dark dimension 3 should be now this might vary a little bit depending on what you have available to you and uh, what you're gearing priorities for normally uh i i want to suggest sort of taking one character from each sort of origin piece or gear piece if that makes sense uh, so it gives you a little goal in mind as to what priorities your gear is going to go towards so uh starting off with mutant characters if you have phoenix available to you I think that should be probably a number one priority if you have her unlocked. If you don't, an alternative to her would be Emma Frost. I am going to say that I think that Emma Frost probably is a little bit better than Sinister, but they're both really, really good, and I would try and get them if you possibly can. Uh, in terms of tech, no-brainer there. Uh, that's going to go towards Ghost. Ghost is the number one tech character that you should be building for Dark Dimension, whether it's two, three, or four. Uh, she's just superior for all areas where you can use her. And uh, that brings us to skill. Now, this one's a little bit tougher. Uh, Baron Zemo, good choice for Dark Dimension 4, uh, but not so great for Dark Dimension 3. There is also Red Guardian here, who you could choose uh, if you have them unlocked and you have good red stars. Uh, very expensive choice, though, for skill gear. Black Widow and Hawkeye, if you're wanting to go that route, uh, if you have good red stars on them, that can be a skill choice there. I'm going to say both of them there in that case, because uh, they actually don't really require too much gear between the two of them. And I think that's about Night Nurse. You, I wouldn't recommend that as my first five. Uh, so if I had to choose Red Guardian, <laughs> Black Widow, or Hawkeye, probably for your skill gear. And so moving on to Mystic, this one's a little bit tougher, but I'm going to have to say my number one Mystic choice is actually going to be Hela, because I think if you're going to combine her with some other characters, the Greg's knockback turn bar, she can spread negative status effects. This is really, really strong. So Hela is my number one choice uh, for first Mystic character. I do think actually she should be a higher priority over uh, Silver Surfer for at least the first run. I think that Hela is a superior character. Uh, this might depend on where your star levels are for both of her. If you're a newer player, then you might actually be kind of evenly matched here for stars for Hela and uh, Silver Surfer, even though for us sort of veteran players, you know, we don't have that high Silver Surfer typically, uh, just like the rest of you guys, and uh, Hela is a harder node to farm, uh, but I do think that she is one of the better ones. And obviously for Bio, hands down, Symbia Spider-Man is going to have to take that pick. So uh, rounding this up, Symbia Spider-Man, Phoenix, Hela, Ghost, and uh, one random skill character of your choice, possibly. Um, Black Widow, maybe, Red Guardian, maybe, uh, any of them would probably do pretty well. Uh, secondarily, though, I we would also consider Minerva, too, if you could. If you're going to take Hela, I am kind of of a proponent of Hela and Minerva together, uh, but Hela is also doable standalone, too. Uh, so hopefully that this helps you guys think about what characters you want to bring up into your Dark Dimension 3. Obviously, some things to keep in mind keep in mind your yellow and red stars. Red stars make a very big difference. If you have any of these characters at five or above, I think that'll probably kind of sway you a little bit and would sway me as well because survivability really matters to how long and, and you know, how long it's going to take you to get through the nodes and uh, how well you can do because, you know, if there's a difference between a two or a three star character and a five or a six or higher character, you know, I would go with that five or a six star character because they're going to survive longer, they're going to do more damage, and they're probably going to get you through that more. So even though I made my list very clear here i do want you guys to know that uh star levels and red stars make a huge difference with the longevity of your character so i hope this helps let me know in the comments down below you know what characters you guys plan on did i miss anyone that you guys think i should have added here you know let me all know that in the comments below as well uh so i hope that this helps
that's going to be the end of the video, guys. And uh, until next time, of course, stay safe. I'll see you all later. Boylan signing out. <laughs>